All right, excellent. Well, it's nine o'clock, guys. We'll get started. Uh, thanks for those who've uh, filled out the poll. Anybody that's uh, just uh, joined, welcome. Um, we'll uh, leave the poll question up there for uh, another minute or so. Uh, but uh, Sam, if you want to slide forward. So, guys, thank you very much for uh, joining. My name is Braden Waters. I'm VP of Sales and Marketing with CGIS. I'm joined with our product uh, expert and uh, product manager for Ebro, uh, Fried. Uh, who uh, has uh, come on board. He's got 25 years of experience with Ebro. And I'm also joined by Andreas Kuhn, uh, Ebro's expert uh, in bulk materials uh, and the valves that operate in that. Um, before we uh, get into any more uh, introductions and uh, do the presentation, I just want to a couple uh, seconds on housekeeping. So again, our knowledge uh, continues to grow um, through working with our customers and getting the input and uh, uh, having the conversations with you. So uh, we do encourage uh, for you guys to participate in this webinar. Uh, there's at the bottom, you'll see the Q&A um, button. Uh, please feel free to ask questions throughout. I'll be monitoring that for uh, Andreas as he presents. And we'll also try to get to the questions at uh, the very end and have a good discussion there. So please feel free to ask those questions. Uh, at CGIS, our knowledge and uh, our experience uh, is really, like I said, uh, um, contributed by the conversations we have with our customers. Uh, the value we try to bring to, to our customers is um, being a trusted valve partner. And um, in, in doing so, we, we look to provide our customers with uh, a wide range of, uh, uh, of solutions, whether it's in the streamlined solution where you know exactly what you're looking for and you want something uh, quickly and uh, at a competitive price, or whether it's on the engineered solution side where you need some assistance in making sure your valves and automation lasts longer. Uh, the one thing we really appreciated when we partnered with Ebro was the fact that they were able to not only support us on that streamlined solutions that butterfly valves are often uh, seen as, uh, but they have a wealth of knowledge in the engineered solution stream as well. Uh, they, uh, they've really helped us uh, provide our customers with uh, a wide range of, uh, uh, of products uh, to, to really increase the life of uh, um, the butterfly valves uh, in, in your applications. Uh, so, I don't want to spend too much time talking about myself uh, or CGIS. Uh, normally, we like to do these presentations ourselves, but uh, on, I've uh, asked Andreas to come and uh, present on, uh, on bulk solids and uh, the valves that go in them. Andreas, like I said, is uh, Ebro's expert uh, on, the, uh, on that subject matter. He's been helping our team for the last two months uh, educate us and continue to grow our knowledge uh, in, on that subject, and uh, I thought it would be a very good uh, uh, opportunity to help uh, share that knowledge across to our customer base as well. So um, um, at this point, I'm going to, yeah, sorry. Real quick, do you want to just touch on the uh, poll results? Yeah, sure. Sounds great. So uh, guys, thanks everybody for participating in the poll. Um, like I said, one of the things that we try to do is to increase the reliability of the products that uh, we put into our customers. And uh, uh, it's great to see some input from you guys. So um, Butterfly valves have definitely come a long way, and uh, you can see that uh, I think the expectations of butterfly valves continue to grow, and so it's good to see that uh, at least 50% of you guys are, are getting three years of life out of your butterfly valves. And I think you know one of the things we say is you, you should and can expect more out of your valves, um, and, and that does show it there. Uh, but there is 50% of you guys that uh, are getting less than a year or uh, even less than a month, uh, three months uh, service in your butterfly bells. And I think that's something that uh, hopefully through this presentation, we can um, help address and potentially come up with uh, better solutions to uh, get everybody into that uh, three years plus uh, range there. So uh, again, thanks for participating in that. Um, so we'll, uh, well, at this point now, I'll switch it over to uh, uh, Mr. Andreas uh, Kuhn and uh, we'll, uh, stop talking and we can take it away. Okay, uh, thanks, uh, Braden. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I'm not traveling to Canada. I'm sitting in Germany in my home office, and uh, I prepared some uh, presentation for you today about our experience in uh, powder and bulk applications. My name is Andreas Kühn in uh, German. Kühn is always difficult to uh, pronounce. Make your mouth like U and say E, then comes out U. So that's the German umlaut. So uh, I'm married uh, and uh, I have children and I'm working with Ebro for quite a while now and I uh, was responsible for developing those kind of valves here. And um, uh, 
uh, of course I do the counseling of our partners in the field of powder and bulk applications. So uh, let's get started. A little bit about our company. The company Ebro is, uh, has been founded in 1935 as an aluminum foundry. And in the 70s, uh, uh, Mr. Breuer started making butterfly valves. And uh, nowadays uh, we have about 1,000 employees. It's a completely family owned business. And we have offices in 28 uh, countries and six uh, product plants. So Abro is uh, involved only with uh, valves. So we uh, have the typical shut off and throttling valves soft seated, uh, triple eccentric, double eccentric and PTFE. We produce knife gate valves and today we will take a careful look to dosing valves and valves used in the field of uh, abrasive materials, uh, tricky materials in the food industry and things like that. It's a brief overview and I invite you to uh, ask questions at the end of the presentation. Um, and we can have a one-on-one -on -one meeting uh, if it is necessary during uh, the coming days. So Ebro is not making the butterfly valves only, but we produce uh, the actuators as well. Double acting, uh, single acting, we produce electric actuators, positioners and all kinds of automation. And we build our own feedback system here. It's really in industry 4.0, so we can transmit data from the valve to your mobile device or local device on Bluetooth and more and more increasingly in uh, IO Link. If you have special questions about that, we can talk about that as well. So our market segments are all around the industry. And uh, what is interesting here is that you find powder and bulk applications in all these industries. So even if you have a wellness center with swimming pools, take a look in the basement. Uh, there are Ebro valves there uh, handling uh, the active coal or the filtration um, materials. Even in shipbuilding, so there is no Navy ship in Germany that has no Ebro valves on board, not only for the liquid management, but also for the uh, air management, so the, uh, the cooling and heating and separating decks and shots. So when it comes to power and bulk application, we handle a lot of tricky material, at least our customers do. So there may be mixtures of uh, spices, there may be tea leaves, there may be herbs, milk powder, but even artificial cheese or artificial ham nowadays is handled in silos, in bins, in pneumatic conveying and so on. And so there comes the valve into the game. Whenever we talk about uh, powder and bulk materials, we take a careful look to the combustibility of the powders, the mixture of combustible powder, air, and we have to prevent uh, to create a spark, mechanical spark or electric spark, electrostatic sparks. And we make sure that our valves are capable to be used in uh, um, explosion uh, environment, explosion uh, dangers. Let's get started with a brief uh, view on the logistics. So you have the silo farms here. You have the silo trucks, they look a little bit different in your country than in Europe. And Ebro is market leader in those valves used in the silo trucks. We make them by the thousands and uh, uh, that is uh, where our experience comes from uh, concerning uh, wear protection because uh, you can imagine if you discharge uh, 27 tons from a, a mobile silo uh, supported by air pressure, you can imagine what happens to the valve here when we have a high velocity um, discharge of material, of abrasive material. 
And that leads to uh, the first valve I would like to show you. Just uh, for your reference, we make special valves for those road tankers with high abrasive resistant uh, material as liner material. And of course, everything is according to FDA or uh, the European standards. In those tankers, we use a special valve that's called TWM. The M stands for metal seated. So here we have an aluminum body, but instead of a rubber liner inside the valve to seal it off, we have a stainless steel inner ring that makes the valve not gas tight, but it's not necessary to have it if you shut off a silo or a hopper or a transportable container. But this valve helps a lot to, to uh, stay clean from one batch to the next. So no grains, no granulate can get stuck in this valve. And uh, of course, there is no rubber wear off that can travel into your product stream. So we use it for silos, but originally it comes from those silo truck experience. Talking about a rough <laughs> environment, we have the cement industry, of course. The ships nowadays are not uh, open uh, bulk holes. They are completely closed containers, tanks inside, and they bring their own pneumatic conveying system on board. And the cement is shot ashore through uh, pipelines up to DN 500. And most of uh, these ships are equipped with agro valves in these environments. So we shoot the material into the silo that uh, um, requires a lot of care how to do it and to make sure that the lifetime of the valve is uh, comfortable for the end user for you. So here we have some uh, uh, concrete silos for cement and you see the pneumatic conveying lines going upwards here into the silo. This is a, a, a plant right in the middle of Paris in France. So we have to make sure that we don't create dust with our valves and make sure that the trucks are loaded as clean as possible. That indicates we need special butterfly valves in the pneumatic conveying line. This is DN150 and the, the main line is DN200. And we have a velocity of uh, 32 meters per second here. That gives a lot of uh, um, uh, challenges for the liner and for the valve itself. Here we have the rail tankers being unloaded by compressed air. The material is shot through this hoses into the pneumatic conveying line and up into the silo. You see even the the, rail, the rails are embedded in, uh, in concrete floor so that there is no dust around because cities nowadays are very particular about the dust uh, concentration in the air. We have special valves for that. Uh, we call them the GMX. It's a very particular, very, very uh, special material, liner material, very hard and very robust against uh, laminar uh, product streams in the pipelines. If need be, we use hard docks. It's a, a, a special steel uh, for the discs inside and hard docks is the material the excavators, uh, the, the teeth of the excavators are made from. You can have it for the disc if you have trouble with the lifetime of the valve. A completely different application is IBCs, intermediate bulk containers. We produce special valves for you here at the bottom. I call them the tennis rack because they have the long neck and they have a tilted hand lever and we can actuate them from outside. So we don't need an actuator on each of the IBCs, but we can actuate the valve 
by applying linear force with a linear plumatic actuator um, to open the valve and to close the valve. So these guys are all around in the world coming with uh, those IBCs and maybe you already operate some without knowing that it is an Ebro valve. Just take a look at your IBCs. If it comes to slurries or liquids in mobile containers, we produce a special valve, a PTFE valve, uh, very lightweighted and uh, because we don't have a lot of uh, pressure here in the system, they are not as expensive as uh, usual PTFE valves, we call them the BE with the short handle here, uh, small footprint, so it fits into those liquid or pastry uh, carrying containers. Coming to the core of our business, it's uh, discharging, holding back of material in environments like that. Here we have the, uh, the silos sitting upstairs on the next floor. Here we have the silo cones, we have a docking station here and of course we need valves here to discharge the material in this case in this automatic driven um, forklifts they bring in the IBCs automatically they lift them up compressing it against the ceiling of the docking station and we discharge the material into the IBCs in this case of course Wherever we uh, discharge material in gravity flow, uh, we create dust. And so we have a centralized dust uh, collection system going to uh, back house and we produce the special valves here um, to be inserted into those clamping systems uh, directly without any counter flanges. <clears throat> That's part of our business. Here in another picture, you see all these little forklifts running around autonomously. There is no person driving them and they uh, drive automatically. They have a, a grid in the floor and they uh, uh, can identify the position they are and they lift the bucket up, the IBC up and uh, receive the right amount of material. Not too much, not too less, uh, down to an accuracy of uh, 20 to 30 grams we can handle with butterfly valves nowadays. <clears throat> I will refer to that later on. Here we have a whole bunch of uh, weighing containers. You see the load cells here. The weighing containers are charged from the silo and of course we uh, can provide you with the right butterfly valve to shut them off. Here a little bit rougher environment. It's construction material. You see all these screw conveyors coming here from each direction of the compass. And we use butterfly valves uh, that can shut off the uh, product stream without overfilling the weighing container. But we can trickle down small amount of material even after the valve has been shut. And if the uh, weighing cells tell us, okay, we need another 150 grams, then we can use our standard butterfly valve, modified of course, um, to trickle down the uh, needed amount to uh, the right amount is which is needed. Sieving machines, I just fly over that. Um, we can uh, uh, provide those valves as well. We do with a lot of OEMs. If you have heard names like uh, Gia or Nestle or <clears throat> uh, Gericke, Buhler, um, they use Ebro butterfly valves. Here you have Gericke mixers, a double shaft horizontal mixer, and we provide the valves uh, for these uh, uh, machines. Here we have the silo sitting upstairs and the material is brought in into horizontal mixers. Again, a rough environment for uh, um, wall plaster. So the different ingredients go into the mixer and we control the material flow here. Mixtures of uh, very difficult materials like metal powders, for instance, you'll see a lot of those Eirich mixers and they all come with uh, high abrasive resistant uh, valves 
so that you can keep the, 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 the stuff inside of the mixer without um, material going upwards. And if it comes to uh, wet mixing, we prevent vapors from uh, going upstream to the silo, condensating at the silo valve and crusting up. It's not only the product uh, going down, but also we have the de-dusting systems here uh, and we control the evaporation of the dust. Pneumatic conveying, of course, we have the, uh, the bin up here. We have the, the school conveyors bringing in the material and we control the discharge of the material into the pneumatic conveying line, vacuum conveying, overpressure conveying, batch conveying, whatever it is. Here again, we have the silo with a vibrating cone, getting the material into the screw conveyor through the butterfly valve into the weighing container. So whenever something looks like uh, this here in your uh, facility, uh, please contact uh, uh, CGIS uh, for some advice concerning the lifetime of those valves or about the dosing characteristics. So even if the valve is a little bit upside down here, the shaft, the driving shaft, is the deepest point of the product flow in uh, gravity flow environments. Even in this uh, strange installations, uh, the Ebro valves do a good job. Pneumatic conveying, the shutoff valve, the pressure release valve, and the material release valve into the pneumatic conveying can be um, uh, supplied with the uh, high lifetime uh, liners. Okay, sometimes it does not look that nice. So <laughs> I think this uh, system was built for uh, eight silos in the very beginning. Then the customer added another couple uh, silos and another one and another one and it looks like a, a spider uh, lying on its back and uh, even in these uh, strange environments here in strange positions we use evil valves to have a safe uh, system so these are my favorite silos yeah actually it is a silo uh, even if it is a small one in the hotel uh, in the breakfast room but we have a, a small diameter comp uh, in, in relation to the height. So I would call that a silo. We have very, very particular materials inside. I prefer to eat cornflakes and not cornflakes dust. So if we discharge the material, it builds bridges, of course, inside. And we need some discharge system that is very nice to the product. We don't want to crush it. We want to meter it uh, very accurately and we want to shut off the silo when the discharge process comes to a halt. Actually, we do the same in industrial size. So we have some actuator outside. In this case, it's my hand turning the stern. And linked to the stern on the same shaft, there is a um, spherical wheel inside with blades and we can transport the material from the upper level to the lower level in a controlled manner. Actually, that's exactly what we do in the industry. We call it impeller valve, not rotary feeder. It's an impeller valve. It's based on a standard aluminum body or a stainless steel, full stainless steel body from uh, our experience with butterfly valves. We have, again, no liner inside but a stainless steel in a ring. So all product touching material is stainless steel. And we have a gear motor sitting on top, just a standard gear motor from the shelf to drive the system. It's a rotating system. So not like the butterfly valve, 90 degrees open and close, but rotating 360. On top of this thing, they, we have a puck, a special puck giving six signals per rotation analog to the position of each of the blades. So we easily can detect the position of the blades so we can close it down, shut it off, 
the product flow is interrupted and uh, nothing trickles down anymore. And we can, of course, control the frequency of the motor to slow it down or to speed it up uh, according to your demands. It's a very light system. So basically, uh, even a DN300, uh, which is a 12 inch, um, comes uh, with about 70 kilos in total, including the motor. So it's easy to handle. You can uh, adapt it to each, uh, to, to every pipeline without uh, using support columns or vibration stoppers or whatever you need. So that's uh, the impeller valve. I don't uh, say anything against rotary feeders. The, you need them if there is pressure difference uh, from the upper level to the lower level. Um, you need something like that. But uh, in 90% of all applications, we don't have pressure differences. There is atmospheric pressure on the top and we discharge the material and we do it with impeller valves instead. We save a lot of uh, height here. Um, so face-to-face -face dimension is very low. And of course we can rotate much faster than a rotary feeder because we have an inlet angle of 160 degrees. While with the rotary feeder, you have only 45 degrees. You have to wait passively for the material to flow into the chambers with the impeller valve, we actively grab the material and uh, push it downwards in a controlled manner, kilo by kilo by kilo by kilo. The typical uh, things we face in the industry is, uh, of course, crusting up of rotary feeders. Even in the food industry, we have to open the rotary feeder to clean it. We don't have these problems with impeller valves. They are completely closed, they stay closed. You don't have to open them for cleaning. You can clean them in place. And that adds to the, uh, to the containment of the whole system. More and more end users uh, don't want to have any uh, opening of the system, um, especially when it comes to pharmaceutical stuff, which sometimes is carcinogen or um, uh, uh, dangerous for the people working with it. So it's basically a very simple system. We have the body, we have the stern turning inside spheric wheel, we have the driving shaft, supporting shaft, the gear motor, and some special sealing system here. Very simple, maintenance free, and that's where we use it. So we have a sand silo here uh, and we want to discharge the material in a controlled manner onto a conveying belt, not overshooting the system because that means somebody has to shovel the stuff away. So we put in a DN400 impeller valve, we control the rotation speed by frequency converter and since then never had any trouble uh, overfilling the belt or not getting enough material uh, out of it. Very simple, no support columns. We just uh, put it in an existing system. We left the knife gate valve here as a revision, uh, a knife gate valve, uh, emergency shutoff or something like that. And then the whole business is done by the impeller valve. Also in the food industry, we leave everything out. No knife gate valve, no butterfly valve anymore at the bottom of the silo the impeller valve will do the job nicely. And we don't overfill our bin here, which is in this case a pressure vessel for pneumatic conveying. Again, very small face-to-face -face dimension. We can squeeze it in uh, instead of a butterfly valve because actually the body is the same dimension as the same dimensions as a standard butterfly valve. In rough in environment where we have wall plaster or floor concrete with pebbles inside up to 10 millimeters we can handle it with the impeller valve easily. We use it as inlet dosing for particular materials in screw conveyors. We can prevent clogging of the screw conveyor uh, just by dosing the material 
uh, in the same speed the, uh, the school conveyor can transport it. We take the energy consumption of the school conveyor motor and if it goes hard and has to uh, work hard, then we slow down the discharge into the school conveyor. It's a self-balancing system and the school conveyor never gets clocked anymore. Some sort of samples of uh, installations just for your reference. That's how it works. Yeah, rotary feeders sometimes are used in pressure less uh, environment. So just to discharge, we don't need the rotary feeder anymore. We can do it with a pedal. Okay, let's go to the next uh, step here. I have a special valve for you today. We call it influs. The influs valve is used where you need a gas tight um, uh, seal off, especially in those pressure vessels and where you face a lot of wear and tear. And if the valve on top of the pressure vessel is leaking, you lose uh, everything and you destroy the valve pretty quick. And that's why we grab a standard valve from the shelf in stainless steel or in, in aluminum or whatever it is. And we call it inflatable sealing. Influs is the short uh, form of inflatable sealing. Actually, what it does is we reverse the process of sealing with a standard butterfly valve. When you close the disc, the disc will squeeze into the liner and create the sealing, the tightness. We do it the other way around. So the disc is a little bit smaller. So even if you close it, we have a small gap. And now we put compressed air or compressed nitrogen, depending on the explosion uh, risk. And we press the liner towards the edge of the disc. And that's the way we seal it off. That reduces drastically the friction wear when the disc closes and opens. So before we open the disc, we release the pressure. Sometimes we use vacuum to suck the liner back and then we can easily open the disc pretty quick uh, to release it. On our website, there is a video and you can uh, take a look at that. We will send you the links to it. So we have, uh, uh, Basically, the standard body, we can use all liners available in standard butterfly valves, also for the um, inflatable sealing, for the inflas. We have two um, uh, connectors to inflate the, the liner that goes pretty quick, and the release is also pretty quick. And we make sure that nothing can travel through the shaft and bearing system. We control the whole process, so you don't have to control anything. You just give us a 24 signal, 24 volt signal, and the deflation, opening, closing, and inflation uh, will be done by a, a little uh, PLC board, which sits in our standard uh, top box here, and we control everything. And even the pressure in the liner is controlled, and we give you a signal if the liner is going to uh, to be exchanged in the next uh, one or two weeks. You get a separate signal into your PLC if you wish. Uh, and you can prepare with the next stop of production. Uh, we can exchange the liner. We do that even in uh, almost full vacuum in vacuum dryers up to DN600. If you are interested, I can give you some more details about it. The next valve uh, we use in uh, powder and bulk uh, is the dosing valve, vibrating dosing, VIDOS. And we use it, for instance, to discharge material in a controlled manner into big bags, into weighing containers, um, into uh, uh, reactors and whatever. Again, we take a standard valve, grab it from the shelf, we modify it, in this case, the lower shaft uh, points to the outside through the body and we add a special vibrator. It's a standard pneumatic vibrator. Explosion protected uh, if you need. 
and we apply some vibration to the disc, not to the whole valve, not to the body. We just lead the kinetic energy uh, into the disc and we vibrate it with a very high frequency, but a very low amplitude. And that keeps our material flowing, even if the material is uh, very particular and it bridges and uh, it doesn't flow right. So we open the valve, we have the full stream as long as we wish, as long as our weighing scale tells us, okay, go ahead. Then we throttle down the valve to a certain angle, down to 20 degrees if need be. And we start the vibration and we have a continuous vibrating and trickle down of the material. Brought you a little video here. You, you see the vibrator with the exhaust muffler. We have the silos where we uh, uh, discharge the material. And during the vibration, you see the material is still flowing, even if it is a very hard flowing material. You have some fluidization sometimes above, but uh, the vibration takes care for the trickle down very, very accurately. So down to 20 grams repeatability. Here you see the, the, the valve is almost closed, but still some material is flowing in a very constant stream. Sorry for the uh, not steady hand, I'm an old guy and uh, maybe my hands are shaking. So here is the vibrator and uh, it trickles down the material very, very nicely. You see the trickling and it is still flowing, even if the material is very hard going. So it's based on a standard valve. We can have all liners, NBR, EPDM, Viton, whatever you need. And we have the standard actuator, we have a standard positioner, we have a standard vibrator, we combine it and you have a trickle uh, valve uh, to be used in the downstream. It comes even in PTFE or a very hard material called Ebrodur. So even the PTFE valve can be vibrated. That's very nice for the pharmaceutical industry, for the food industry, of course. Some samples here. Last but not least, I would like to introduce something we call cycle lock. <clears throat> Cycle lock basically is based on standard butterfly valve, sometimes a little bit modified. Inlet valve, outlet valve. In between there is a container or a spool pipe. And what we do here, I brought you in a little video. Uh, you can find it on our website as well. And I try to start it. Yeah, it works. Can never be sure using PowerPoint. But basically what we do here, we have a pressure difference from the top to the bottom, from the inlet side to the outlet side. Maybe it's a bag house with vacuum on the top and we want to discharge the material into a pneumatic conveying system uh, with just overpressure below. So we open the inlet valve, wait a split second, and then we discharge the material into the next step of production, maybe pneumatic conveying, maybe atmosphere, big bag, maybe um, a reactor or whatever. So it's a, it's a batch discharging system. We can um, use it for different applications, of course. The crudest uh, we have ever seen is, uh, you see the marks, the hammer marks here. There is a silo, but the material did not flow out because from the pneumatic conveying line, there was air leaking through the rotary feeder. They could not get it away. They tried everything with this crazy spider here to get the air out because the air was building an air cushion in the silo cone and uh, prevented the material from freely flowing. So we removed the whole stuff uh, and replaced it with a uh, cycle lock. And since then uh, the material is flowing nicely into the pneumatic conveying line. We use it as an explosion decoupling device. So we make sure as Ebro that the whole cycle lock is designed that at least one of the valves is closed. 
and can hold back the pressure blast and the flames. We make sure that it is not possible during the operation that both valves are open. We counter block them. It's a special electronic we use to do that and of course the mechanics. And we make sure if there is an explosion in the back house, it cannot travel through this discharge line further into the atmosphere or into the next step of production. It's not possible. So we guarantee that we have all the certificates uh, to do that and we can hold back explosions and we can isolate one part of the machinery to the next part by those cycle locks. It's very, very nice because uh, it, it's still based on standard butterfly valve. So the cost is, uh, is uh, reasonable. And if you want to, dis to exchange a liner, it's a, a thing of 20 minutes. And then the system is running again. You don't have to remove anything here. Uh, uh, heavy stuff, you don't need forklifts. You just uh, take out the valve, uh, repair it, replace the liner and put it back to work and it's 100% gas tight and nothing is leaking through the system. Reason is we want to prevent any explosion. You may remember uh, Imperial Sugar in Georgia down there. They had a primary, uh, a prime explosion in the silo or in the outlet of the silo. And this explosion dusted up so much sugar, which was uh, sitting on uh, motors, on cable uh, bars and in, even in the walls. And the, the first explosion dusted up the sitting sugar, creating a second uh, explosive environment. And the second explosion destroyed the, the whole factory, leaving uh, several people dead. We want to prevent that and we guarantee that by using cycle locks. So we have valves here on the inlet side even there is an explosion suppression, we make sure that nothing comes out of the back house and uh, the explosion is stopped right here. Again, it's uh, simple. It's based on standard butterfly valves, nothing very special. Of course, all the valves are approved for explosion protection. They are uh, ATEX or IAC, EX or whatever and we use them even in a difficult environment. If you don't want to interfere with your existing hardware, software, PLC, we can provide you with a little control box. It's very easy, it's a touch screen and all the functions can be inserted here. So it comes as a plug and play solution. You just insert it instead of the rotary feeder or whatever you have. We can build it as long as you need it. So it might fit in uh, uh, right in the position of your existing system uh, if you want to change it. So summarizing, we talked about uh, linerless uh, uh, butterfly valves just for holding back granulates and powders uh, in pressureless systems. Uh, we took a look to the impeller valve dosing kilo by kilo by kilo by kilo, very homogeneous flow. Inflas to reduce the wear and increase the lifetime, uh, to double the lifetime uh, at least. And we uh, took a brief look to the vibration dosing system, trickle down so we can have it full bore for the main bulk of the material to be discharged. And only the last kilos will be trickled down by throttling the valve and starting the vibration, keeping it running. That's basically uh, what I would like to introduce today. Of course, it's a, it's a quick overview. I know that if you have detailed questions, uh, go ahead, uh, give some questions in the comments or f &A, or contact uh, uh, CGIS later on by email or by phone and we can arrange a one-on-one -on -one meeting to discuss further details if you wish. Thanks Great. a lot for attending and uh, thanks for your uh, patience with my poor English.
<laughs> that was fantastic. Thanks so much, Andreas. We do have some questions. So if you guys want to stick around, you're more than welcome. We'll uh, start to answer those. Um, and as Andreas mentioned, if there's any other uh, applications or any uh, particular problems you guys are having with your plants or uh, with your clients' plants, please uh, feel free to reach out to any one of us. I've got we got the contact information up there. Uh, so just a couple of questions right now. And uh, guys, any other questions that you have, please feel free to shoot those into the Q&A. But the first one is um, for cement silos, what would you, what would be the best recommended liner material uh, to use? Uh, the valve is mounted outdoors in Canada and can reach minus 20 in the winter and plus 30 in the summer. Yeah, so this is uh, sometimes very particular. So if you, if we are talking about uh, um, straight down uh, uh, gravity flow. Um, we have a liner, it's called high abrasive resistant NBR, which is very, very good because uh, it's, uh, it's a high density NBR and the lifetime is um, even better than uh, polyurethane. And on the other hand, if we have a pneumatic conveying, for instance, with high velocity, we use this GMX material which is a modified polyurethane. And uh, this is very hard and it's very robust uh, against uh, laminar streams, which we have mostly in uh, pneumatic conveying lines. And if it comes to the disc, uh, we use the hardox disc uh, sometimes here to prevent wear on the disc uh, to, to make sure that the lifetime is reasonable. And uh, yeah, it lasts a long time. Perfect. Yeah, just uh, on that, um, we've uh, we've had some really good success with uh, the HAR and BR. Um, yes. One of the things we really like with the the Ebro uh, design and, and the Ebro uh, uh, brand is that they have a wide variety of seat materials and and uh, disc materials to really tailor the product. Um, we have one customer that was getting uh, two to three months life out of their butterfly valve on a uh, cement barge. And um, initially, we just sold them one off the shelf with the standard EPDM seat. It took it to about uh, six or eight months' life, so yes. double, yes. tripled what uh, they were getting out of their previous brand. Um, but then uh, we, we put in the uh, HAR and BR, and it's gone uh, over a year now. And I got a call from the customer saying, uh, "You guys made a mistake. You've uh, <laughs> we used to buy lots of L's from you guys, and now we're gonna <laughs> we're not gonna be able to buy as many." So, but uh, no, happy to help out and uh, make that. So, yeah, that uh, was a great. Uh, a great solution there. Um, all right, thanks for that question. Next one, Andres, is uh, what valve would you offer for dry flocculent service? Flocculent, dry flocculent. Yeah, so this is uh, sometimes very, very particular. Uh, it depends a little bit if it is just uh, uh, downwards flowing. I would prefer to have uh, the influx valve here, not because of the wear, but to prevent the, the flocculent from coagulating during the closing process of the valve. So when we use the influs valve, for instance, we close the disc and we don't compress the flocculant in the closing process. Sometimes this creates flakes, which is not so nice to have in the next process. And uh, we, we have a lot of those uh, simple influs valves with a simple pneumatic uh, uh, control box, nothing very special. And that works pretty well there. Thank you. All right, next one. Uh, what disc and liner material do you have for your inflatable liner valves, and the inflas? Uh, would they resist hot HCl vapors? Yeah, so um, um, it depends a little bit. We have 64, 64 different liners. Even if you ask for an NBR liner, we would ask you, yeah, what kind of NBR? <laughs> so uh, it, it's, it depends on the product, of course, on the pressure rate, on the temperature range. Uh, so we select different NBRs, EPDMs. Um, with the, the question you asked me, I would prefer to take FKM. Uh, that's mainly the, the, the only thing that resists the material if you want to use the influs. But since the influs is based on a standard butterfly valve, you can use the whole range of soft seated liners, all 64, uh, to inflate it. So we cannot inflate PTFE, not yet, 
and we cannot inflate stainless steel. That's the only limitation. Now, would you, uh, just a follow-up question, Andreas, Sarah, for um, really the inflas, again, uh, would be would recommend it if you have solids and you're trying to reduce the, the wear on the seat uh, when that disc comes into the rubbing, or if you had uh, um, sensitive material that you didn't want to crush into the seat. Um, yeah. So if it's just a, if it's just a hot um, hydrochloric vapor, uh, would, you, would you probably just look at, if it's clean and clear gas, you'd probably look at a, a PTFE line valve uh, yes. zoomer. Mm. Yeah, yeah, okay, perfect. Yeah. All right, thank you. Um, how much temperature can support the liner, H, or how much, or the HN, the H and BR? Um, yeah. And maybe just to clarify, you have both HMBR as well as HAR and BR. Yes, so maybe exactly. <laughs> you can speak both. So, so the high temperature NBR, the H NBR can take 120 up to 130 degrees Celsius, which is the range usually you only have uh, EPDM or FKM. Um, and the high abrasive resistant NBR can take up to 90 degrees Celsius. Okay. So high higher temperature NBR and high abrasive resistant, they are different in the temperature range. Right. And for high, high temperatures, you do have, is it sil you have some silicones and some yes, yeah. other we, ones there? We use, we use silicon and depending on the application, we can uh, use even FKM, Viton, uh, for a wide range of temperature. We usually limit it to 170 degrees Celsius. But if you explain the application a little bit in detail, then uh, it might be that we go higher. Correct. Um, the impeller on the FSM valve sits outside of the valve body. Can these valves be efficiently substituted for a common butterfly valve? Yes. The question is, yeah, can you install yeah, it? So if you, if you have a, a common butterfly valve, you can take it out and you can replace it by the impeller valve. The inner diameter is exactly the same. The face-to-face -face dimension uh, uh, are usually the same but you have to have a compensator to get the valve in, to get the impeller valve in. Space because the, the wings, the, the, the blades, they stand a little bit uh, uh, out. So you need a compensator or you have to remove one of the pipes, uh, a, a spool piece or something like that to get right. the stuff in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. All right, next question. Uh, what valve would you recommend for an oil refinery FCCU catalyst system, which is very fine, but also very extremely abrasive? Yeah, so uh, again, it's the, the inflas valve uh, that is used in these applications, uh, not only in, in, uh, in uh, crude oil refineries, but also for refineries for uh, Food grade oil, palm oil, palm oil, for instance, we dose the material in by using inflas valves. But in addition, we prevent the vapors from condensating uh, on the disc surface, on the lower disc surface, by using a special, I call it tornado flange, that cleans off the disc before we open it and before these uh, condensated. Uh, vapors could get in contact with the downflowing product. If you uh, need details for that, let, just let us know. We will show you how this is done. Yeah. Um, can you speak to the, um, uh, S, I think it's the SBR green uh, versus the GMX? Where would you use one versus the other seat material? So actually the SBR green is a, is a very resistant material, uh, so we like it very much. But as soon as it comes to turbulences, uh, the SBR is very good. And if it comes to laminar streaming, the hard material of the GMX is much, much better. So, and uh, SBR has one disadvantage. Once it starts ripping, it, start, it, it rips all the way through. So uh, in this case, we prefer to use the, the GMX. If it's just downstream uh, gravity flow, the SBR is very, very good. But if it comes to pro, uh, pneumatic conveying, for instance, where you have uh, laminar streaming in the pipeline, the GMX is much better. Great. 
So okay. that's basically the, the differences. All right, uh, another question came in here. Is there an impeller assembly that can replace rotary feed products that have a square flange? Um, and as a follow-up uh, Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, uh, we, we, we think a lot about that, but uh, since we remain circular inside, so it's, it's cylindrical, um, usually we, we come down with a cylindrical pipe and we stay cylindrical uh, other than the, the rotary feeder and we go all the way through downstream cylindrical. So that's the advantage. If you ha already have a rectangular or a square diameter pipe going downstream, then you have to adapt it. Okay. So okay. there is no other chance. There's a follow-up question to that. Will the volumes be comparable, I guess, between the, our round impeller versus the, uh, a square impeller. Yeah, we can we can uh, uh, make a calculation. We have a software here uh, based on uh, on our experience. And if you give me the parameters like uh, uh, um, density, so how many kilos per liter, or how many lbs per what is it <laughs> cubic inch, <laughs> then I can do the calculation for you and uh, make a proposal. Uh, uh, about the output range, the discharge range. Um, just give me the parameters. I will do the calculation easily. All right. Sounds great. I think that's uh, all the questions in. Yeah, but uh, again, about the FSM, since uh, the rotation is uh, the rotation speed is much higher than uh, a rotary feeder ever can do. So even even with a with a uh, ten inch uh, impeller valve, we can go up to sixty five rotation per minute. Okay. An impeller and a rotary feeder never can do that. The filling ratio will go down, and you fill each chamber only up to twenty five to thirty percent. And uh, the impeller valve still keeps it up to eighty percent. Uh, and last question: What uh, what information do you need to properly select? Uh, uh, the right solution, what do you guys look for? So uh, usually if we know a little bit what is above the valve and what is below the valve, is there a silo, is there a big back discharging, is there a, a suction conveying, um, then we have the, the inlet uh, parameters and uh, um, of course what is below the valve. Is it a reactor, is it a packing machine, is it a sieving machine, whatever it is, just let us know these details. If you can send a, a picture or a drawing uh, that makes it even easier, and then we can evaluate the diameter uh, and uh, the discharge rates pretty easily. Okay. But uh, you know, powder is a very particular material. Even if you think you know all the parameters of your powder, the next application will show you it works quite differently. <laughs> That's the experience from long years. Uh, you never know exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. I think one of the one of the best uh, insights you gave us early on was uh, looking at your uh, silos uh, above the valve and seeing how many uh, hammer marks are on that uh, silo. Yes. You see a lot of hammer marks. You know that uh, something's not working properly. So. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's great. Right, perfect. Well, that looks like uh, all the questions. So uh, thank you very much, everybody, for your participation. Uh, again, Andreas, thank you so much for uh, uh, sharing your time with us. I know it's getting late for you uh, in Germany there, so appreciate uh, you uh, staying up and, uh, and doing this. Uh, again, if there's any other questions, guys, that you haven't had a chance to ask or if there's applications that you want to look at, please feel free to reach out to Andreas, myself, and Farid. Uh, happy to help you. And um, we'll go from there. We will, um, Sam will be sending out a, uh, uh, an email with a link to the recording as well as a couple other pieces of collateral that uh, hopefully you'll find uh, useful and uh, uh, stay tuned for our next uh, webinar in the uh, coming weeks. Thanks everybody. Thanks a lot, it was a pleasure to be in Canada today. <laughs> <laughs> Always welcome. Yeah, thank you. And bye-bye. See you guys.